Okay, let's say I write down the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way up to 15. How many numbers are there? Well, it may seem really obvious, and that's because it is. You just answer 15 because there are 15 numbers written here. And so you're probably wondering, why am I even asking you this if it's so obvious? And is it going to come up on the GRE, please, please? No, not quite. Not going to come up on the GRE. It's going to be a little bit more complicated. But let's take it from this very basic level that everyone can answer to something maybe slightly more complex. Let's say I write down the numbers 5, 6, 7, all the way up to 15. How many terms do I have now? And now you may be rolling your eyes thinking, no, not again. But if you answer 10, that's actually not the answer. If you count up the terms 5 from 15, you'll see that there are 11 terms. And that's the trick or the twist. Why or how can there be 11 terms? Well, let's go back to this really quickly. When I asked you the number of terms, did you say, well, 15 minus 1 is 14, therefore there are 14 terms? No, of course not. But if you answered 10, you probably went 15 minus 5 is 10. So you see, there is a little twist here, and it is different because you have to count the actual term itself. So when we're subtracting, for instance, numbers, let's just say 4 minus 2, that equals 2. But if I list out the numbers 4, 3, 2, are there two numbers? No, because we're not counting the 2 itself. But up here, in this list of numbers, we're obviously counting the 1 and we're counting the 5. So you always want to add that number that you're subtracting from back in when you're actually counting for the number of terms. So when you have a consecutive sequence, just as we have over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, you always want to take the last term minus the first term, and here's the key, plus 1. That will tell you the number of terms. So let's try it. Let's say we have a person who does jumping jacks. And that person does 20 jumping jacks, and they go all the way down to 10 jumping jacks. And then they stop, and they're tired, understandably. Now, how many sets of jumping jacks did they do? Not total jumping jacks. We'll get to that later. But how many sets? Well, again, don't just say, oh, 20 minus 10 is 10. They did 10 sets. Make sure you add that one back in there. So the answer would be 11 sets. So this formula right here is when you have consecutive numbers. What happens if you have even numbers? A consecutive series of even numbers, not just integers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but now 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, etc. Let's go all the way up to 12. And here you see that I'm adding them, but at this point, really, we're just listing them out. So we want to simply determine what are the number of terms. So if we're dealing with an even progression here, we also want to use this formula, but with a twist. We take the last minus the first, and now here's the key. Before we do any adding of this one, you want to divide by the difference between each term. Now you may ask, well, wait a second. We didn't do that over here. But in essence, we did, because the difference between each term up he over here is 1, because we're dealing with consecutive integers, you can see that dividing something by 1 really doesn't make a difference. So it's not it's like we're not even putting anything there in the first place. But when there is a set difference between the numbers, in this case they're even, then you want to find that difference, which is 2, and you want to divide by 2. Only then can you add that one back in. So in this case, we have the last digit is 12. First digit is 2, so we bring it down here, 12 minus 2 divided by 2 plus 1. This gives us here 10 over 2 plus 1, which is 5 plus 1, or there are a total of 6 digits here. So this is important for counting the number of terms before you can actually add up the number of terms. So the next video, I'm going to show you how to now add up all of these integers, whether they're consecutive or even, or odd for that matter.